Well, I was going to do an experiment today, which would have entailed a lot more time to do with the glass jar and the hard-boiled egg. I believe i seen this demonstration on a channel, Cody's Lab. Don't quote me on that, because I don't remember positively. But I do remember that it was a shameful experiment where this guy gets a glass jar, a hard-boiled egg, and throws a lit match into the glass jar and covers it with the hard-boiled egg, which, when uh, the lit match is in the jar, it extinguishes the oxygen, burns it up. And then the egg is uh, sucked into the jar, which is what I seen. But he goes on to tell people that it was not the vacuum, but it was the outside pressure, the air in the room, that somehow detected that beyond that egg was a vacuum inside the jar, okay, and that the outside atmosphere of air pushed the egg in. And this is nonsense, complete and utter nonsense. And I was going to do this experiment because I did it, and the egg did indeed go in the jar, the glass jar. But what I did further was to get the jar, empty the egg out, and throw in a lit match again. But instead of putting the hard-boiled egg on the top, I put the palm of my hand. And once the vacuum was created, I could feel the vacuum pulling on the skin on the palm of my hand. Now, there's no way... I mean, the ignorance of these globe defenders might put forth that... Uh, outside air was pushing through the skin and bones of my hand and trying to push the skin on the palm of my hand into that jar, which is absurd and stupid. Okay, I was going to show that experiment where you could not only, where I can not only feel the vacuum pulling on the palm of the skin on my hand, but you can also see the skin on the palm of my hand being pulled into the jar. But I figured something out a lot quicker. Now I have here today is this medicine bottle made of plastic about six inches long. I'm going to squeeze it, right? I'm going to squeeze it to expel the air and I'm going to stick it to my leg, okay? Do you see, do you see that? That is sticking to my leg because of the vacuum inside. There's no air or pressure pushing through the skin or bones of my leg to push my skin inside that plastic medicine bottle. Now, it's not... I didn't create too much of a vacuum, but you might be able to hear the pop. Okay, you didn't. Let's do it again. Okay, that's better. Okay, now... That demonstration proves that when you take a plastic bottle and you squeeze the air out of it, you create a vacuum. You see? That's sticking to my leg. I'm sure you heard that. Now, that this is similar to those old-fashioned compasses that old people would... Uh, affixed to their dashboard with the suction cup or like su suction cups with little decorations on them that grandma would affix to her glass window. You press the suction cup in to expel the air and the, the inner vacuum within that suction cup affixes it to the glass window. Now anyone who will continue to man maintain that vacuums do not suck, that they're inert, that they don't do anything, that it's outside pressure that will rush in to fill the volume is illogical and ignorant. And that's all there is to it. Now, you wonder why this is so much emphasis on this. It's because they want you to believe that the vacuum, the infinite and expanding vacuum of space can uh, exist alongside of our atmosphere, which they say the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, 
an exosphere is are are these different layers of gaseous atmosphere that surround the outside surface of the earth and i would put forth why doesn't the infinite vacuum consume the oxygen of the earth or why doesn't the oxygen of the earth rush in to fill the available content empty content of the infinite and when i say infinite they they teach that space goes on forever and that's why infinite is used now they teach you these lies about a vacuum because they don't want anyone realizing the truth that if outer space was an infinite vacuum we wouldn't be here all the air and gaseous properties within our atmosphere would be gone now they teach that the carmen line begins somewhere around the mesosphere around 250 miles in altitude okay <laughs> now i read an article that was published by nasa in some magazine about the echo 5 satellite helium balloon made of mylar like a half a millimeter of mylar and it reached an altitude of 1,000 plus miles. Okay, this was well before they started preaching that space began at the Carmen line, some 250 miles up, and that after that, the air is almost gone. And once you hit the uh, mesosphere or thermosphere, it's gone. So how could a helium-filled balloon reach 1,000 miles high? That's four times higher than they say that where the area of space begins, the vacuum of space. It's, it's absurd. And I just showed you how to quickly create a vacuum. You push the air out of a plastic bottle right here. You push it out, you squeeze it. And then you put it against your skin and it will suck. You can feel the vacuum within this plastic bottle sucking the skin on your leg inward. This is why water will appear to bubble inside a vacuum chamber and why a plastic toy will expand because it's being pulled on in all directions. And I don't want to go on to say that that appliance right there is named a vacuum because it sucks. That's why they call it a vacuum. That's why they call an airplane an airplane, because it flies in the air over a plane. There's an idiot out there. He's, an hitch he's a hitchhiker. And without Google, he'd be nothing. But he tried to tell me, oh, well, aer aeroplane came from the French, uh, the wor a word by the French. But he left out, which was right under that. The part about the plane comes from the Latin, which is level. Okay, so a plane flies over a level surface. That's why it's named that. And that's why a plane uses two instruments, a gyroscope and an artificial horizon indicator, which keeps the plane level with the horizontal horizon. And you can fly a 1,000 miles, and that plane will maintain a level parallel flight to the horizontal horizon as indicated by the artificial horizon indicator. You see, and there's no way that all that level indication on the artificial horizon indicator could add up to a curve. There is no curve. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the earth is. I don't exactly know. I do know that it's stationary, and whatever its form is, it's built on a level foundation that does not move. I know for a fact we do not live on the outside surface of a giant ball within an infinite vacuum. That is absurd. If that were true, we would not be here because the air would be gone. It would be in the vacuum of space. Okay? So if you look into it, you, can, you will at least find that what you thought where globe facts are not facts, they're theories, and they're theories that are taught as fact. And I was astounded by all the things I thought were actual proven facts, and they're not. The, the folk cult's pendulum does not prove that the earth is moving. They don't tell you that these pendulums have magnets installed directly over them and that they have to be started 99% of the time by a human pushing it. 
and they operate in opposite directions and w with two of these things in the, the uh, same vicinity. They stop all the time. If the earth, if I've seen some video of a, like a 100-foot crane with a big wrecking ball hanging from it, okay, and they filmed it for 20 minutes and the thing never moved. So it's illogical for that not to move, but then they use full cult pendulum with a, magnum inst a magnet installed directly overhead. That's how they keep it moving. And it does not prove anything. Einstein, the, the, he's a guy, he's a plagiarist that these globe defenders, they worship this man as a genius. But he is was quoted as saying... There is no optical experiment that can prove the earth is moving. And Foucault's pendulum was around in his day, and it is an optical event. It's something you can look at. So, and the fluid dynamics prove that water in mass, i.e. large waters, but large bodies of water always seek and maintain their level. Now, you could fill this room up three feet high, and once it's settled, the surface would match the floor. It'd be level. You can run your hands through water, and you can see immediately that it is far too unstable to maintain any shape on an open surface. I'm not talking about putting water in a balloon, because then the water is contained and will conform to the shape of its container. I'm talking about water, large bodies of water, that have an open, unrestricted surface. They cannot curve, even for an inch. It has not and will not ever be demonstrated. This guy goes on and on about gravity, uh, force, occurrence. It's never been directly detected. That's why it's a theory. Gravity is not a fact. It is not. Unbeknownst to you, it is still a 500-plus-year-old theory. And there, these facts all amount to a conclusion that we do not live on the outside surface of a giant spinning ball within an infinite and expanding vacuum. The only way we can create a vacuum, I created a vacuum with this plastic bottle, but it needed a container, okay? We cannot demonstrate a vacuum anywhere on the surface of the earth unless it's contained. And once the vacuum is contained, it cannot expand. It cannot grow, and it cannot get bigger in all directions. Okay, this is absurd. We are taught absurdities. And the reason why they lie is because it boils down to two factions at war with each other. The early church and men of science. One group of atheists and another group who believe in a divine creator. And the atheist must contradict the earth as described and depicted in the Bible. Otherwise, they will lose followers. They must teach their, their constituents to be atheist. And this is what this shit boils down to. Okay, we cannot have a pressure gradient without a container. There is no gaseous body of any gas that can exist without it being contained. Okay, this is, this is just the facts of reality on the earth. They create all these areas that are too far away for us to test anything. They have a monopoly on these theories. They make places up that are so far away that you can't verify it, but they will, they will swear on a stack of Bibles and a stack of Einstein manuscripts that 250 miles above our head is a freaking infinite and expanding vacuum. That is impossible. Okay, and that's why they teach lies about vacuums. Vacuums do suck, and you can create a vacuum right in your house very easily. You don't need a glass jar with a lit match and a hard-boiled egg to do it. Because the throwing a lit match in the glass jar with something over the top will eliminate 
the oxygen inside and create a vacuum. And once that vacuum is created, it sucks the egg in. It is not the outside pressure. I also did this hard-boiled egg with a feather above the egg. And if outside pressure and air were pushing that egg in, it would move the feather, and the feather never moved. I, I will probably do this experiment at my 200-year-old 200, 200 antique table in the kitchen. But the, the experiment I did was I did it with the egg, and then I substituted the palm of my hand. And that vacuum within that glass jar pulled on my hand. I could pick the jar up with lifting my hand, and the suction inside that glass jar kept that glass jar affixed to the palm of my hand, to the skin. And you could see, I could see the skin on the palm of my hand going inside that jar because it was being pulled in. Do I need to show you again? I will. Here we go. This is a plastic bottle opening. I'm going to discharge and press out the air. And now it's the vacuum is sucking on the skin on my leg and keeping it affixed there. The outside pressure has nothing to do with it. Let's do it again so a bigger pop. It's not, it wasn't that good affixed. This one is good, better. That, that was accomplished by me creating a vacuum in that plastic bottle by squeezing the air out. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Gravity is a blatant falsehood and falsity. It's a, not a force, it's a farce. And you can say whatever you want. Dude, you're just lying to yourself. There are major fallacies with the globe model. Number one, that space cannot be a vacuum or we'd have no atmosphere to breathe. And number two, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are blatantly and highly misdescribed on every model globe in existence because large bodies of water cannot do that. They cannot curve upon their surfaces for 25,000 miles in circumference and there is no force or occurrence of gravity to pull the water down perpendicular to the center of the earth. It is moronic to believe that. You should at least know there are major problems with the globe heliocentric model. These atheists are not really atheists. They worship the pagan deities of Mars, Venus, and Saturn, and they worship the sun, Sol Helios Ra, there's a reason why every day of our week is named after a false god. They've done this. They worship Apollo, Orion, and Artemis. They name their rockets Dragon. If you ever have time, Google NASA miss mission patches, and you'll see wizards and dragons clutching the earth. All pagan satanic deity nonsense. Okay, and that's what we got. We got... Monday, name for the moon, moon day. We got Tuesday for T's day, false god. Wednesday for Wooden, false god, Wooden's day. Thursday is named after the false god Thor, Thor's day. Friday is the false god Frigg. Saturday is the false god Saturn, Saturn day. And Sunday is their most important day, the sun, for Sol Helios Ra. That's why they took the earth out of the center of cosmology, which has been that way way longer than the Copernican nonsense they say was introduced 500 years ago. They replaced the earth as the center of all cosmology with the sun. These fools don't even understand that they're supposed to believe that the earth is spinning faster than a bullet at the equator, 1,039 miles an hour, and darting around the sun at 66,000 plus miles an hour while at the same time the sun hauls ass through the alleged galactic center of the Milky Way at almost a half million miles an hour. And guess what the, the Milky Way galaxy is doing? 
It is supposed to be hauling ass through the universe at almost a million miles an hour. Now, if you've seen the animation of this, you would understand that the Polaris, the North Star, always being over the North Pole every day of the week of every month of every year proves that we are not orbiting the sun. And time-lapse star trails at the North Pole show perfect, tight, circular star trails. And that denotes to the, with these liars that the Earth is rotating. But what about the 66,000 plus mile per hour speed that's going on the same time that the Earth is spinning? Why don't these time-lapse star trails show that movement at 66 times greater? They will come at you at lies like scale. It's only like a fraction of movement. It's a 66 times greater movement. It should be recorded in star trails that are time-lapsed. But this video pertains to vacuums, and vacuums do suck. And I just proved it. You can make up your lies and whatever you want to say. When you use one of those suction cups to fix something to a glass window, you press it in to expel the air, and when it, and, and when it goes back to its normal shape, it is creating a vacuum, and that's what keeps it affixed to the glass window. Okay, and when a hard-boiled egg is sucked into a jar, it's because of the vacuum inside, not because of outside pressure pushing it in. That is so stupid. Okay, if, the, if outer space is an infinite and expanding vacuum, infinite with no end, why doesn't the gas, our atmosphere, rush to fill the empty content that's all around it? You're going to tell me about the magical force of gravity. That's ridiculous because the clouds move whatever way they want in between our atmosphere that's supposed to be glued to the ground of the earth. So they both spin in a relative manner, but the clouds in between do whatever they want. And this gravity that we're supposed to be all experiencing can, can outpull the vacuum of space that's infinite? That's ridiculous. Vacuums suck, and I just proved it. And if you don't believe it, you suck too, hitchhiker.